I've been meaning to do this video for about seven years and it's very weird that that's not an exaggeration. I went through a period of time in about 2011 when I was reviewing a lot of Jacqueline Wilson's books independently and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to add it to my list to do my top five. I would not be writing today, I don't think, were it not for Jacqueline Wilson. Like many people of my generation, I binged read her books when I was about eight or nine years old and didn't stop reading them. And I've never stopped reading them. So I feel like the first thing that will become quickly apparent is that none of these books are recent releases, so there is a nostalgic element there. But I feel like my reasons for putting them in my list are also fair. So we're going to start with what I believe was the first slightly grown up book that I read, and that's Girls in Tears. Jacqueline Wilson's Girls series deal with slightly more adult topics. I think they were her first foray into more teenage fiction. So it's Girls in Tears, Girls Out Late, Girls in Love, and Girls Under Pressure. Girls Under Pressure was nearly at the top of the girls list for me but I think Girls in Tears I had the fondest memory of because it was the first time I went to the library by myself and I got a big batch of books and I remember Girls on Tears was at the very top of that batch. Then we have one that I feel like is making a comeback. I could be wrong in saying this but I think it's being turned into a film. It might even be a recently released film. This is The Suitcase Kid and The Suitcase Kid runs away and she has a suitcase and she has a Sylvanian rabbit. And I think the reason I love this for the most part is because I had Sylvanian toys as well when I was growing up and I had a Sylvanian rabbit so I could imagine myself being this girl and obviously it tackles issues that a lot of Jacqueline Wilson's books tackle about children who either feel unloved or they're pushed away from their family or they feel like they're in the wrong place, they want to run away, they want to escape and it deals with this and a lot of her books do. And the reason I particularly wanted to put this one in is because I remember there was a map in the book and I thought that was very clever. And I thought it really allowed the reader, I thought this one was like eight years old, really allowed the reader to be able to envision the character's journey. The next one I love because I'm a spiritualist. I've read this one twice, I think, but definitely no more than two times. Uh, this is Vicky Angel. And at the very beginning of the book, this girl, the character, the, the protagonist's friend, dies. And she comes back as an angel. And it's definitely, unlike Girls in Tears, which is aimed at a slightly more mature reader, Vicky Angel is actually aimed at the child reader. And it's a really good way of getting children to kind of learn about death and realise that death is something that can happen at any moment and you could be struck by grief. And our protagonist goes through that grief stage. And obviously being a spiritualist, I really like that aspect of it. Even when I was tiny and not a self-confessed spiritualist, I always loved the concept of angels. In my second spot, I want to put the first one that I ever read, and that is Sleepovers. Sleepovers is, as far as I remember, the first Jacqueline Wilson book I read, and then it was The Worry Website, and then it was The Mum Minder, I believe. Sleepovers is about this group of friends, they're called the Alphabet Girls, because their names are Amy, Bella, Chloe, Daisy, and Emily. And they have a sleepover, but one of the girls is a bit horrible. And there's uh, a sister who has uh, a disability. Off the top of my head I can't remember what that is because I haven't read it in a long time. But it's kind of teaching children to be nice, to be friends, but also that in times you're going to encounter people who are slightly different to you and you shouldn't be nasty. And actually even the nasty people are vulnerable and have insecurities and often they're only nasty because they are insecure and it's their way of putting up a barrier. So I thought it had a great message. I don't know if I perceived any of that when I read it for the first time. I just liked it, I think, at that age because it was about sleepovers and clicks and, and doing all of these things that you dream of doing when you're a little girl with your friends and getting everybody around for all of these birthday parties. So I think there's a lot that can be gained out of sleepovers. And number one is not only my favourite Jacqueline Wilson book but probably the one that influenced me the most when I was growing up, Lola Rose. Lola Rose, just seeing that cover, that original first edition cover, just fills me with tears. I remember reading this book it's about a little girl and uh, her mother and her younger brother and they win. They have a small, I think it was a scratch card win and in the beginning of the book they're going out spending this money lavishly and getting denim jackets with pink fur trim uh, that was very fashionable at the time and all these chocolate bars and magazines and it's the kind of life every reader wanted to live. But then things take a very dark turn and it's, it's, I think it's one of Jacqueline Wilson's largest in terms of page numbers, certainly at the time. And after I read this, 
I wrote my own novel, probably about a seven or eight page short story, I can't remember, and I gave it to my teacher and she read it out to the class. And at one point she was like, I can't read this to my class of 11 year olds because I started talking about um, my character's mother was having an affair or something like that. And obviously I'd perceived these more adult ideas out of Lola Rose. So it's, it was quite a step up in a very adult book when compared to things like, you know, the mum minder and the suitcase kid and things. So for me, I read it and then wrote my own short story. And that, that power, that influence that Jacqueline Wilson had over me at that age is one of the most pivotal aspects of my childhood. Had I not read those books and then found myself inspired to write, I may never have worked on my craft and become the author that I am today.